So I'm Brandon. Uh, thanks for coming to my presentation. Um, about me, I started a project a couple years ago called Protomaps, which is focused on web mapping. And um, just for context, um, I know this title might sound a little off for people in this audience. A lot of the, um, the companies or organizations I work with are not necessarily map focused. And one of the things I hear being someone that works in web mapping and with vector-based maps is that aren't base maps like a solved problem, you know? Like, just use Google Maps or something, you know, it's great. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you know, it's free or there's like a free tier. Um, and I think for web mapping in particular, uh, it's sort of a hamburger where your web UI is the top bun and then you have some thematic data, some markers as the meat or the filling, and then you have a base map as the bottom bun. And I think most people are kind of like filling or meat people and not bun people. Uh, but for me, I'm like a bun person, and I think a lot of people in this audience are also bun people. Um, so I guess what this talk is really about is like, how do we get excited about hamburger buns? Uh, base maps, right. Uh, so, some popular bottom buns out there are Google Maps, Apple Maps, uh, Esri, uh, even things like OpenStreetMap.org tiles, uh, OSM Cardell raster tiles, various commercial map APIs based, you know, sort of often based on OpenStreetMap. There's tons of them out there. Uh, there is a plethora of different options. Um, but I'm so excited about this problem of base maps that I made my own bun. Uh, so, the ProtoMaps base map is a fresh bun. And it is a totally open source, openly licensed project based on OpenStreetMap. And it is delivered as a PM tiles file, which is a format I designed a couple years ago. So you just plop the entire thing as a single file on S3 or on Azure storage or on any like thing like GitHub pages, just a static file. And you can serve an entire tile set that way. And that works for the entire planet. Uh, it's designed mainly for the MapLibre open source renderer, uh, which is a uh, very user-friendly, smooth, interactive map renderer for the web. Um, and one major focus of the ProtoMaps project, which is uh, different than other projects, is that I really want to encourage different derivative works. Um, so that is more like, instead of giving you a, a pre-chosen base map, um, you know, with all the colors and fonts selected, kind of give you a skeleton and have reasonable defaults, but also make it possible to change those things. And because um, it can be hosted by company uh, totally by your, yourself on your own storage, um, it becomes possible to like really uh, to slim down the data or to change the sprites, to change the fonts, uh, and to really make it your own. Uh, so the default version of this uh, is something that you can browse on maps.protomaps.com. Uh, this is sort of the development build that gets built once a day off of OpenStreetMap data. Uh, so if you go and edit OSM, uh, you will see your changes uh, in about 24 hours. And there is uh, five default base map styles. Uh, there is a light and a dark base map uh, that have POIs and icons that I'm adding as well as three grayscale data viz styles. Uh, and those are meant more for like the bottom bun use case uh, where you have uh, some like choropleth or markers on top, which is a pretty common use case for web mapping. Um, and this is all open source and uh, the way that the layers in vector tiles are organized uh, has a new documentation page I just published, uh, which is at docs.protomaps.com. Uh, so you can look at the eight or nine different built-in layers, uh, and you can you can also uh, so you can also hover over an interactive map of what tags are available, uh, what data is available at which zoom level, for example. Okay, so we have this new ProtoMaps base map, uh, this fresh bun, and if it is free and open source and customizable and quite easy to deploy, it should be easier, but it, it's, uh, it's easier than other alternatives. What can you do with it? Um, I just found out yesterday that there is another project at this conference uh, that uses this, uh, the NPR map. Uh, so the NPR map of USDA's gardening zones, um, and this is an interactive map uh, that uses the base map built to MapLibre. Uh, so uh, awesome project, and I hope you go to this presentation, this conference. 
uh, the National Zoning Atlas by Green Info Network uh, is an interactive display of an aggregate of zoning information for the entire US uh, that uses a sort of a more muted base map to show uh, these purple zoning areas on top. Uh, I found out about this on the internet. Uh, it is toilet map, uh, and it is for finding loos in the UK. So if you need to find a public toilet, uh, then the markers uh, are sort of in these clusters, um, and there is a leaflet-based base map underneath. So another uh, totally custom design built on the same data. And there's querying the map. Um, it experiences that uses a very vibrant uh, base map uh, with markers on top. Um, also using the same data. Uh, there is map. Uh, so if you go to flickr.com slash, I think, map or explore, then you can browse geotag data. Uh, that's all across Flickr. And they also have a map style that matches their brand. And even offline, so not just on the web, but also on an arcade cabinet. Uh, so All Maps is a historical georeferencing project that's open source, and this arcade cabinet was installed on campus at Delft for a while, and this uses the entire base map offline, loaded onto like you know a small computer like a Raspberry Pi, and has an interactive uh, sort of game where you can georeference maps. And even on top of the Salesforce Tower in San Francisco, uh, so this loads the base map or into a video and plays it on top of skyscraper. So, so Eric Thies had uh, this awesome project running on top of Salesforce Tower uh, in April of this year uh, at nighttime. So really, very unique use case for base maps. Uh, so is the base map done? Like, you know, there's all these creative use cases. Um, and I think what I discover a lot when talking about web mapping is the threshold for a viable base map is surprisingly low. Um, it just needs to be sort of like, like people look at it and they're like, oh, you know, like that looks roughly like how the world seems, so it seems okay. Um, but because I'm fascinated by so many of the problems in base mapping, um, I wanted to talk about uh, some ways to make this uh, base map thing more exciting, uh, some interesting challenges that I plan to implement uh, or, are, or I'm working on already. Um, and in my opinion, like maybe the only two problems or the most exciting problems are labeling and generalization, especially for a global multi-resolution base map. And uh, one of the biggest first things is that we changed in version four uh, is not defaulting to English. Uh, so English is an explicit opt-in where you pass a code. Um, so if you have that it was originally in English, then you can change it to Spanish, for example. Uh, and this is important for, uh, for public sector requirements in a lot of countries or states, um, having some way to customize the language label. Um, this is a pretty common feature among web base map APIs. Uh, but we wanted to do more than that. Uh, so we have 40 supported languages. Um, which is, uh, part of this work was funded by a, a EU grant, uh, so we wanted to make sure that all the languages in the EU were supported. Uh, but one unique thing about this was we wanted it to also be, by default, multilingual, so to show more than one language at a time where appropriate. And this is especially important uh, for multi-script. Uh, so for example, in Japan, uh, showing uh, both the romanized text and, and also the text in kanji. Uh, which uh, I feel like makes the base map feel more cosmopolitan, and it's also really useful for travelers, uh, for a tourist application. So by uh, the map is multi-script. So if you choose English, it'll still show the local language um, script, um, so for all the labels. Um, and multi-script also applies to languages uh, that are more specific, uh, because this comes from OpenStreetMap, in a lot of cases, Name tags will have information. Um, in this case, uh, these are Canadian Aboriginal syllabics. Uh, so in Canada, in some places, in OSM, they have this data. So this is shown by default uh, for, um, for all the scripts. Uh, so even if you choose English, it'll show more than one script. And uh, one thing that we're experimenting with um, is support for South Asian text in MapLibre. 
Um, right now, even though MapLibre is very powerful and popular, it does not support a lot of languages in South Asia. So we have experimental support. Uh, right now, only for, for, uh, so for Nepali um, and some of um, And for other generalization, um, we are using some techniques to do data joins. Uh, and at small scales, we use natural earth. So in order to, to compute a ranking for, for example, city labels, we join with natural earth. Uh, that information is stored in the scale rank column. But that generally doesn't apply for large scale maps uh, or high zoom levels. Um, so we're working on a new system based on QRank which is a data set that is built off of Wikipedia page views to compute uh, a similar scale rank for OSM data um, you know, at the city or even neighborhood level. And that's important for being able to generalize POIs like landmarks to be able to show um, more uh, sort of important landmarks um, at smaller scales. Uh, some other new things are uh, the Daylight or Overture project has released a land cover data set based off of ASA data uh, that is free and open source. So you can download that from Overture and we're bringing that in for land cover. Uh, and you can also explore that interactively at the Overture Maps Explorer website. Uh, there is a new editor.protomaps.com, which is basically map, uh, is the Maputnik editor for MapLibre, but also supporting PM tiles. Uh, there is a kind of work in progress themes API where you can, you're able to change the palette and soon the fonts using TypeScript. And uh, for just the roadmap of the base map, uh, this new bun, uh, the, so the major focuses for the rest of the year are easier customization of the base map, easier customization of the base map. So, uh, so for example, um, like the NPR project or the Flickr project, it should be easier to theme it with your brand. Uh, so we're working on that. We're adding hundreds of POI categories, uh, shields, and land cover. Um, if you'd like to hear any more about this or support this work, uh, you can find me at the conference uh, or on Slack, or you can email me at this address. Uh, thanks, and I have time for questions. Yeah, once again, raise your hand if you have any questions and make Nat run over to you. Over here. Y'all keeping me on my feet. Yeah, I was curious if you'd ever thought about allowing people to interactively alter the bottom bun for accessibility, for you know, increasing the contrast, changing, changing, changing some of the accessibility elements for the bottom bun. So the question was about uh, having an interactive control for accessibility. Um, I think it, it's super important and it's even a requirement for public sector use in a lot of cases and especially for open source web maps. No one has really tackled it. I know systems like Google Maps uh, do a pretty good job of working with screen readers. But I still think that the solution space is wide open for map libre based rendering. Um, and it's something that, that I'd like to see more. Um, I do, like, I would like to see uh, some color scheme options uh, for accessibility. And I think that is something that we want to work on. Yeah. Hi, thanks. Uh, in, for my team at work, we use base maps um, that we import with the contextually package in Python um, for like automated report generation. And I'm curious if the base maps that you customize with your project can be imported that way. Um, so just to clarify, they're, they're imported in, in Python. Um, is it using like uh, something like a Jupyter notebook? Uh, yeah, there's a, a package called contextually that adds a base map to the back of any sort of matplotlib access. And uh, you can import from all the different providers that you listed in your presentation. So I'm curious if uh, the same would be available. Um, right, so the question was about importing a sort of base map into the contextly package in Python. And it's uh, like it might already have options for like OpenStreetMap raster tiles. Uh, so for proto maps, we do have a uh, 
API that's free for non-commercial use that does require an API key. But if you host it yourself on, say, S3, um, then you should be able to reference that. It might require like a plugin for MapLibre, but for Leaflet, there's also like a similar plugin that will let you use the vector base maps by default. Um, and you could host that on like a bucket for your company or for your school, for example. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I think that's all the time we have for questions. Um, but rem remember that you can ask them on Slack as well. Thank you so much, Brandon.